So, at this point, everybody has someone in their life who's affected by cancer, and more specifically, chemo. And the best way to help them is by understanding what chemo is, what it's doing to them, and why it's their best chance to get over the cancer. So, if you can think back to biology, you probably remember that your whole body, for the most part, is made up of these things called cells. They're the building blocks of life, and these little creatures that kind of make up what you are. So, they grow and they replicate, and they clump together in such a way that they make up whole parts of you, right? So your skin or your organs, those are all just a bunch of cells clumped together. They do this growth by cell division, basically the, the cell cycle. So a cell will grow up and it'll become mature. And when he's mature, he starts to duplicate all of his organs. Everything inside of him that makes him work and his DNA, he duplicates. And when he's all done duplicating it, he starts to actually split in two. And these two separate guys, they have the exact same group of organs and DNA, everything. They are identical. And now there are two of them, and they go through the exact same process of duplication, and then it goes on forever and ever and ever. So if you're the kind of person who smokes a lot, eats too much salt, doesn't really get out a lot, too much junk food, has too much red meat, eats lead paint, basically anything that you know is really bad for you, those things, they, they put poisons in your body, they make it unhealthy, and they make it so when it's duplicating that DNA during that process, it's really vulnerable. And if it's really vulnerable and something goes wrong, then you have these mistakes. And for the most part, the mistakes aren't a big deal. But when you have these really big mistakes in the DNA, because it's the blueprint for your entire body, the DNA is the blueprint for everything else that goes on. So when something goes really wrong in the DNA, you have a big problem. And that's exactly what cancer is. Basically, you have these three big mistakes that get made. And this happens in all tumorous cancers. And the first one is that it starts to duplicate too fast, way too fast. Whereas most of your cells in your body take a few days to duplicate, this will start doing it every few hours. The second thing is that it becomes immortal. It no longer ages like the rest of you. It keeps growing and growing and growing and it never ages and dies. And the third thing, and this is the worst thing, is that it stops doing what it used to do, right? So if you had a lung cell and you have lung cancer because you smoke too much, now it stops cycling air. You no longer get oxygen through air and it no longer helps you out. Instead, it's just kind of making you sicker by growing and taking all the nutrients and taking all the blood from everybody else, right? And it just keeps growing and crushing all the other lung cells around him. So basically, your cancer is just like everything else in your body except for these three things. And that's the problem, right? Because if you have an infection or there's a bacteria inside of you, you can just go take antibiotics and then you're fine because it'll kill the bacteria, but it won't touch you. You're fine. But your cancer, your cancer is you except for these three tiny differences, right? Otherwise, it's just like everything else in your body. So how do you get rid of it? Well, a long time ago, someone had this idea. And he said, okay, well, let's just look at those three and we'll say, hey, which one of these can we use to work against the cancer? And so we thought, hey, how about that first point? It divides really fast, right? And I know that during the cell cycle, the division, it's really vulnerable. So we looked and he found these very specific poisons. And what they do is while you're dividing, they get in the way. And you know them today as chemotherapy drugs, but basically these are poisons that muck up the division process, right? So when the cell is trying to divide, it'll make a mistake and it won't keep its skin together and it'll just spill itself out into the, into the environment and lose all of its organs and now it's totally dead. Or another one, it binds the DNA together so tight that when it tries to duplicate it in two, it just can't pull it apart into two pieces. And so the cell just kind of dies because it doesn't know where to go from that. And all your chemotherapy, they use different methods of getting this exact same goal. They kill it during this process because if you kill it now, you kill both the original and the duplicate. You get rid of them totally. And that's the idea because your cancer duplicates so much faster than the rest of you, once every three or four hours, that if I go and I put you on chemo, then during those three or four hours that you're on chemo, all of the cells in your tumor should try to divide. And when they do, they're going to kill themselves because they're in this poison. There's this poisonous soup that's in your blood. But everything else in your body, those duplicate much slower. So for the most part, they don't really have that big of an effect. They're, they're not that hurt. Now, the only exception are parts of your body that duplicate really fast, right? So the areas around your fingernails and your hair follicles and parts of your stomach. And so that's why you lose your fingernails and you lose your hair and you get really nauseous and sick because these are the parts of your body that are duplicating every two or three days. So while all the cancer is dying and almost none of the rest of your body is dying, you're losing a good amount of the cells in those parts. And that's our problem because... Right now, it is the best way that we have to target the cells of our cancer above the cells of the rest of our body, but there's still this collateral damage, right? The rest of you is going to take damage, and parts of you, like your, like your faster growing parts, are going to take the most damage. 
And so the question is, how much can a person take that's going to kill the cancer as much as we can, but not hurt them enough that they'll die? And so every doctor sits down and he figures out exactly how much you need to still survive, but to make sure that the cancer is gone. So your loved one who's on chemotherapy and is getting the treatment and is getting very, very sick because of it, has the option of refusing further treatment. And it comes down to quality of life. Your hair is falling off, you're losing your fingernails, you're nauseous and sick all the time, and you feel like you're wasting away. But it's either that or it's the cancer, which is going to hurt more than anything else you've ever felt, and it's going to kill you in the long run. So the best thing that you can do for them is be supportive and be helpful and show them you care and that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And show them that you understand, and if you need to, help them understand too. I hope this made sense, and I hope it was interesting too. And I hope you and your loved ones benefit from watching it. Thank you.